In October last year, Iraqi Kurds held their now infamous and doomed referendum, which saw Iranian Kurds, about six to eight million of the population, burst out in celebration in cities like Bane. The effect that this had across the region was seismic, with hopes of not only a Kurdistan established in the north of Iraq, but a greater Kurdistan. The Israelis, including the government intelligence services and army, uh, gave their rather cynical support towards such a plan. We're going to look at why the Kurdish question in Iran is so different, how it's led to Turkey, Iran and Iraq forming a new stronger partnership despite huge amounts of distrust between those three countries. Why is the Kurdish fight slightly different in Iran, not as furious? And what does it mean in relation to Scotland's support for the Kurdish cause? Now, the Kurds make up about 10% of the Iranian population. Uh, their aim is for autonomy, either regional, within Iran, or as part of a, a greater state. Uh, but there are worthwhile questions about why firstly the media's attention hasn't been on the Iranian Kurds who they would argue have suffered uh, huge amounts of discrimination uh, and have had their national aspirations frustrated. It's partly due to the fact that the Kurdish population in Iran is considerably smaller in proportion to other countries such as Turkey and Iraq and so there isn't the existential threat to the state as you would expect, although the government in Tehran would still see it as a threat. This is changing when we consider the effects of social media. Now the Kurdish community in Iran can forge greater links and see what's happening to events such as the Kurdish referendum in Iraq. And this is starting to stir movements in the northwest of the country. Now for our point of reference, there are clear links between uh, groups in Turkey, um, Kurdish militant groups and political groups such as the PKK uh, and the PJAK, which is the Iranian equivalent for the Kurdish political and militant movement. It's uh, similar to the PKK in that it has Marxist ideological origins, uh, it seeks uh, an autonomous uh, ethnic form of independence, uh, it has a dual uh, leadership system with a male and a female uh, convener and leader, uh, and also seeks to promote uh, not only the political and economic well-being of its people, but culture forms a, a vital part of the struggle for the PJAK. Now, the PJAK, otherwise known as the Party for Free Life in Kurdistan, was founded in the 1990s. It carried out a, a whole range of attacks on Iranian security forces uh, for the past two decades. Um, some analysts have stated that these attacks have intensified, especially when we consider the war in Syria, uh, as well as the constitutional turmoil in Iraq. They've also, in fact, uh, sent fighters to, to Syria to aid Syrian Kurds in their fight against ISIS, as well as some rebel groups that have seen fit to attack the Kurds in Syria. Iranian Kurds have had a difficult time, even with the recent Iranian protests. They're in a bind where any breakdown in the authority of the government in Tehran may allow them to push forward their autonomous desires. But in Iran, there's a very strong nationalist sentiment, an idea of the nation as a whole, an idea of the nation as indivisible. Uh, of course, we look at the program from the 1880s through to 1906 and 1912, the Persian Persianification of the state, society, culture. And this had a huge influence on the way that other Iranians see the nation as a whole. Um, and despite the disturbances caused by the Iranian protests, the national conversation over issues of economic welfare, the Kurdish parties have had to be rather more subdued in the way that they approach the protests, not to be seen to be taking advantage as to lose the support of other Iranians across the country. It's the dual line of being Kurdish and being Iranian where there are clear links between two for these communities. Again, and uh, to me, the question of Kurdistan, the Turks pushing back on the Iranians are all... all Why is this relevant for Scotland? Well, 
Scots, Scottish left, Scottish nationalists, have an instinctive sense of affection and solidarity with the Kurds. They see a downtrodden, exploited, ever betrayed people striving for national self-determination and feel a degree of affection and affinity to that. But it's important that we understand that the Kurds, as they're described by media outlets, are complex. Kurds themselves will tell you that you'll find a million opinions within their ranks. We shouldn't group the Kurds in Syria, the Kurds in Iraq and in Iran and in Turkey all into one basket. The idea of a greater Kurdistan doesn't even have actually a lot of currency among Kurds in the West or in West Asia. We have to keep this in mind. Solidarity has to be based on accuracy. It's important that we inform ourselves always about self-determination and movements of liberation and the complications therein. Thank you.